What's up, everybody? Nasser Ahmed here. It's Saturday, July 28th, and I want to thank you guys for tuning in to this edition of NST. I've got all your updates in the world of sports coming right up. But first, I want to remind you guys that after the video, you guys can hop on over to www.drafted.ca and vote for your man, Nasser Ahmed, to become Canada's next sportscaster. Also, you can follow me on Twitter, at Nasser Ahmed 93, for even more sports updates. So we kick things off today with some breaking news, as the Orlando Magic have finally found a replacement for Stan Van Gundy, as they've named former Kansas Jayhawks star Jacques Vaughn as their new head coach. The Magic made the announcement this very morning, and they're going to formally introduce Vaughn at a press conference on Monday. The 37-year-old Vaughn becomes the 10th coach in team history. Now Vaughn has never been a head coach before, but comes to Orlando after spending the last two seasons as an assistant in San Antonio. We now move on to the biggest news from the last 24 hours. On Friday, just one day after Brewers general manager Doug Melvin announced that Zach Greinke would be traded before the deadline, it was the Los Angeles Angels who stepped up to the plate and made the Brew Crew an offer they just couldn't refuse. In exchange for the 28-year-old starting pitcher, the Angels gave up three of their top 10 prospects in the minors. The deal is centered around number one prospect, 22-year-old shortstop Gene Segura, who will likely become the Brewers' everyday starter in a few short years. The other two players given up were AA pitchers Johnny Helweg and Ariel Pena. Now both are very talented young players who project to become fixtures in Milwaukee's rotation for years to come. On the flip side of this deal, the Angels, who are in the thick of the ultra-competitive AL West race, now bolster the rotation with another legitimate ace. Sweet, I just rhymed. I didn't even do that on purpose. A rotation that features names like Weaver, Wilson, Heron, Santana, and now Grinky promises to be a force in the AL for years to come. A long-term extension for Grinky is the next step for the Angels. In hindsight, we can probably agree that Doug Melvin and the Brewers made off like bandits in the night, snagging three top 10 prospects from the Angels for a pitcher who was going to walk away in three months anyway. But I'm sure it'll be completely worth it for the Angels, as the acquisition of Zach Greinke could prove to be the difference in how the West was won. The Angels and Rangers kick off their next series on Monday, and with 10 games between the two teams still to be played, expect this race to go down to the wire. Oh, and don't be surprised if the Rangers make a similar move in the next few days. On to another trade made in the MLB on Friday, the Colorado Rockies trade former Blue Jay infielder Marco Scudro to the San Francisco Giants for minor league infielder Charlie Culberson. Now while this trade doesn't have the fanfare or the impact of what the Angels just pulled off, it's still a move that helps the team as they make a push to win their division and make the playoffs. The Giants, who lead the Dodgers by two games in the NL West, will add depth to their infield and Marco Scudro will man third base while Pablo Sandoval recovers from a strained left hamstring. From trades in baseball to trades in basketball. On Friday, the Hornets, Suns, and Timberwolves agreed on a three-team deal that will send center Robin Lopez and forward Hakeem Warwick from Phoenix to New Orleans, and forward Wes Johnson and a future first-round pick from Minnesota over to the Suns. The Hornets continue to reshape their roster as they plan on building around first overall pick Anthony Davis. The acquisition of Lopez fills a need at the 5 spot after trading away Emeka Okafor and allowing Chris Kamen to walk away in free agency. You may wonder why Minnesota and Phoenix made this trade with virtually nothing in return besides a first rounder for the Suns. Well both teams weren't done just yet. With the cap space provided from the trade, the T-Wolves quickly turned around and signed veteran forward Andre Kirilenko to a 2 year $20 million deal. Minnesota elected to bring AK-47 back to the NBA after failing to pry Nick Batum away from the Trailblazers. Kirilenko most recently played in his home country of Russia and with the Utah Jazz before the lockout. Phoenix also wasn't finished after the trade as the announcement came down Friday that they re-signed guard Shannon Brown to a two-year deal. Brown averaged 11 points and 2.7 boards in a career-high 23.7 minutes a game last year for the Suns. Shooting guard became a position of need for the Suns who signed restricted free agent Eric Gordon to an offer sheet only to see it matched by New Orleans. One more signing to mention in the NBA from Friday, as the Toronto Raptors signed free agent point guard John Lucas III. The 29-year-old guard put up career bests in points, assists, rebounds, and games played last season with the Bulls, and is a welcome addition to a team that already features point guards Jose Calderon and recently acquired Kyle Lowry. A lot of athletes were signing new contracts on Friday, as the Winnipeg Jets announced that they re-signed defenseman Tobias Enstrom to a five-year extension. 
The 27-year-old Swede scored 33 points in 62 games last season with the Jets. He's the franchise's all-time leader among blue liners in points, assists, and games played. Another major re-signing to report on, this time in the NFL, as the Pittsburgh Steelers have signed a contract extension with a stud wide receiver not named Mike Wallace. On Friday, the Steelers announced a new 5-year, $42.5 million extension for wide receiver Antonio Brown to ensure that the third-year pro will be wearing black and yellow until at least the 2017 season. While the move catches many by surprise, considering number one wide receiver Mike Wallace is holding out for a new contract, it makes a lot of sense for the Steelers. Brown was set to enter the final year of his rookie contract, and the sixth round pick out of Central Michigan broke out last season, becoming the first player in NFL history with at least 1,000 receiving yards and 1,000 return yards. He also made his first Pro Bowl and was elected Steelers MVP last season, so locking him up now was a wise move. The only question that remains is, was this a message to Mike Wallace that if you don't sign your franchise tender, the team is willing to move on without you? If a deal can't be reached soon, the Steelers may even look to trade Wallace during training camp. From the pros to the amateur sports now, we shift our attention to the 2012 Olympic Games, and our first story is sure to tug on the heartstrings. U.S. Olympic swimmer Missy Franklin said that she was so deeply affected by the Aurora, Colorado shootings that she will be dedicating all of her races in London to her home state of Colorado. The 17-year-old swimming star is from Aurora, attending high school and training there. She said she will use her heartbreak over the tragedy as inspiration while swimming her heart out in an attempt to make her home state proud. Franklin is expected to compete for the gold in London. As one of the U.S.'s best athletes, she might just end up making the entire country proud. Finally, we close things out on NST with more Olympic swimmers. We're focusing on the growing rivalry between 2008 Olympic golden boy Michael Phelps and fellow countryman and world champion Ryan Lochte. We all remember how Phelps captured the world's hearts after he put on the greatest performance of any Olympian, capturing eight gold medals back in Beijing. Well, since then, you could say he's experienced a bit of a drop-off. Instead of continuing his domination over the sport, like most expected, he admit that he relaxed and didn't train as hard. Lochte, on the other hand, saw what Phelps did firsthand in 2008 and brought an incredible work ethic to the next four years, going on to dominate Phelps in the World Championships. Now the stage has been set. Just like a pair of heavyweights, these two will battle it out for the world to see. Will the hungry Lochte prove he's the world's greatest, or will the golden boy reclaim his title? They'll compete in their first race today, as they'll take part in the grueling 400 meter individual medley. I don't know about you guys, but I've got my money on Lochte. He just wants it more. Well, that does it for this edition of NASA Sports Talk. I want to thank you guys once again for tuning in. I also want to get you guys at home more involved, so if you have any questions you want to ask me, or just some sports topics you want me to talk about on my show, leave them in the comment box below. Or, you can tweet me your questions, or topics, at NASARAMID93. Don't forget to make your way over to Drafted.ca and vote for your man NASARAMID to become Canada's next sportscaster for the SCORE Television Network. Take care, folks.